Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome here from Dale Lippert Field on the campus of Dean College. I'm Robert Rochelle along with Brendan Howe and Randolph Thurman. Starting with Brendan, what are you expecting from today's game? I'm expecting a pretty high-scoring game today, Rob. Both teams have really struggled coming into this one. Alfred State's still going to pick up their first win with Dean one coming in at 1-3, and three, looking for their second win of the year. I think both defenses have really struggled, and the offenses will capitalize on that. Randolph? Just like Brandon said, I believe that it's going to be a high-scoring game. I think that Dean's going to come back and have another good win, just like they did last week. Well, thank you both. We'll be right back. Julian Burris. Nicholas Cade. On the return for the Bulldogs, he'll send it deep. Takes it up the play, he's going to run it back. And we'll get to about the 33, 32-yard line. Something that's been better for Dean that we haven't seen over the course of the past couple of games is, is starting field position. That's something that they've struggled with. They've gotten the ball deep on punts and on kickoffs down inside the 20, but now... A couple first drives of the game have started at the 30-plus. Nicholas Cade on the return for the Bulldogs. Offense coordinator for the Bulldogs trying to get everyone together here, trying to respond after a pretty long drive. 12 minutes and 51 seconds left to go in the second quarter. 12-6 to 6, Alfred State if you're just joining us here on Power 88. One to the right and three to the left. Whistle on the play. And it will be a delay a game on Dean College. A lack of self-awareness on the play there by Terrell Watts. Yeah, that's just a mental mistake that can't happen there if you're if you're the Bulldogs. You gotta gonna know the situation, gotta know the amount of time left on the play clock, and those those are the kind of penalties that'll kill you in a game like this. Especially when you're already trailing by a touchdown. First down and fifteen at a back up five yards. At the 29-yard line, sets back throw his watch. He'll just dump it off to the wide receiver. He's going to get a lot more yards on the play. He gets a five or six yards on the play. But he'll get a lot more on kind of a pushback. One, Julian, Burris. Julian Burris on the reception. When in doubt, hit your best target. That's Julian Burris on the outside. A nice quick screen pass by Watts, just trying to get back those five yards that they were cost on first down. Second down and six here for the Bulldogs. A big play there to be able to kind of get them in a comfortable place offensively. Back in a shotgun set as watch. He's going to run it off to Grange. He'll get a couple of yards on the play. Quickly stuffed on the play by a host of Alfred State defensive linemen. Good job by Alfred State staying disciplined there on a second down run play. You would expect normally a, a play action from Dean in a situation like that, but not on that time. And Alfred State defensive front able to stay home and beat their blocks and bring down the running back range. Nixon on the tackle. For Alfred State. Third down and four. Sits back to throw his watch. He's going to throw it deep and it is caught. Going to go all the way for a touchdown, Dean College. Errol Bro for a touchdown. How about that on Terrell Watts? Showing it off, Errol Bro beat his man in single coverage, and he was wide open in the middle of the field in between the numbers, and he took it home for the touchdown. A huge momentum swing for Dean College, a great play. 12-12, and with a PAT, Dean College could be in the lead. See here, but they're going to go for two. Small move here by Coach Terrell after the kicking miscue. Great decision here from Dean. You're not chasing any points, and if you don't get it, you're still in a tie game. I like the aggressiveness being shown right here. In a shotgun set is Watts. Grange to his left. One to the right, two to the left. Sets back to throw his watch. Going to roll to the left throws, and it is not converted. As it will stay 12 to 12 tied there, and Terrell Watts, receiver wasn't nowhere near the end zone. Yeah, on a two-point conversion, I'm not really sure what, what type of a play call that was. You want to get your, your receivers in the end zone and give Watts enough time to get somebody open, and if he roll out, if he has to. That was a bootleg play, and not sure that's the right call there on a two-point conversion. 
Ding Dolls are off to kick it away to Alfred State. 11 minutes and 34 seconds left. A really quick drive for the Bulldogs. Quick drive, but an effective one at that. And every time you can get points on the board of any caliber, you know, you, you got to take what you can get, especially in a, in a back-and-forth type environment game like this is. Alfred State will receive the ball unless if Dean decides to do some type of onside kick. You never know in the game of football. Two guys on the return for Alfred State, though. Keegan Brown on the return for Alfred State. He's going to kick it away. Will be picked up by number 81. He's going to go all the way out to about the 33. Balls out, balls out. The ball is out and it will be recovered by Dean. The second miscue today by Alfred State, unable to protect the football. Heck of an effort there on the tackle for Dean College. I believe that was Shyed Bronk, number 28, on the kickoff team. And, Rob, we, we referred to earlier in the game that special teams can be such a key factor in, de in deciding close contests like this, especially with two teams that have a lot to prove. Alfred State looking for their first win, and those couple of mishaps on special teams won't help. With Dean just on offense, they're going to be able to go back out there, and Alfred State defense is going to be pretty tired. Dean College with a first down and 10. At the 21 yard line, Dean here going to try to take the lead. Sets back throws. Watch, he'll throw it deep, and it is incomplete. Patted away there by a Alfred State cornerback. A great play there, Julian Burris on the intended pass. Southeastern New England's hottest rock, Power 88, presents Dean College basketball. Welcome back here at Pierre Gymnasium. Scores here 17 to 16. Newberry 11-54. Left to go here in the first half. Bring up the court now for Newberry is Robertson. Now he's going to slide it over to Williams. Williams is going to go inside, pass it now over to Witherspoon at the top of the key. He's going to try to drive, heaves it up for three, and it's blocked by Sean Odom. Quickly coming back in transition here. This is a wide open Sean Odom. Heaves it up for a three, is Russell on the play there, and misses it coming off the mark now. He's a brilliant. He now is going to drive, gets it back up, and misses the opportunity. And a three on one opportunity. Amari Baker's going to drive inside to Russell and gets blocked on the play there, newly added in the game was Sims. Now he's going to throw it all the way over to the other side of the court. Kicks it out for a three for Robertson, and he has it for the three. Just can't leave it wide open like that. They're up by four here, 20 to 16. 10 minutes and 50 seconds left to go. Driving inside quickly, though. That's just right back by Randolph Thurman. Quickly coming back in transition, though, is Williams. He now is going to try to drive, and it will be a Traveling violation will be the Bulldogs ball here. Great defense there by Dean Guard, Davon Russell. Going to bring it up the court here, passes the timeline. Bulldogs within two here. That's a pick by Larry Baker. He's going to drive, kicks it out. To Russell for a three, got it! play there they're up by one as it now is Robertson Round out the play here less than 10 minutes left to go here in this first half halfway through as now is going to slide it back over to Witherspoon he's going to try to drive himself up for the two and has it with a friendly goal scores now 22 to 21 and up the court now will be Thurman now pass it over to Joel Booker. Picked by Sean Odom, fakes it out himself though. He now is going to drive on Witherspoon. And a foul on the play there, but it will be on the floor as now there won't be any foul shots given, but those will be able to inbound. Witherspoon's already on his third run. 
through the ball, so you have to make sure you can take it, take advantage of that. Down here now is Jordan Booker. Throws it in out the top of the key, and we'll set it up. Is Davon Russell's going to set a pick by as well? The Taras is going to be added in the game. He drives, bounce passes it in. The Taras misses his first one and misses the next opportunity rebounded by Witherspoon. Going to quickly bring it back up, up in transition here. Almost loses it on play by a Jordan Booker steal, but loses the ball. Will still be Newberry's ball though. Cross, cross, cross. Bounding it in now to Robertson. Like by Jordan Booker, Dan oh, sets a pick. He has an inside and gets blocked on the play by Randolph Thurman, but a defensive foul will get called on the play. Then we'll be at the line though. Bogs are already at six fouls, Rob Toll, for the team. So let me get him more free throws. They're up by one. First one is good. They're up by two. 23 to 21. Nine minutes and 18 seconds left to go in the first half. That shot is good. They're out by three, 24 to 21. Looks like a football score, Ben. Yeah, it sure does. Over up the court now will be Randolph Thurman. We'll pass it right over to Davon Russell. Back now over on a switch over to Jordan Booker. Kicks it out for Thurman. For a three, misses it off the market. Rebounded by Sean Odom. He'll go up and we'll get foul on the play. Bulldogs have been struggling, Rob. Really from behind the arc. If you look at it besides Savon Russell, they haven't been able to get more consistent three-point shooting, which they've been great all season. Sean Odom at the line will be shooting two here. Bulldogs are up down by Three first shot is good. Armani Baker is coming in for Randolph Thurman. His next shot will be good. Who we'll looks so far today really doing a nice job of converging on their foul line opportunities. Yeah, and that's going to be crucial, especially if this game gets to really close. Goes up for an easy two, perhaps, there. That ball goes out of bounds. It will be Bulldogs basketball there. Hey, Explain the, some of the action that happened there. They went right down the court. Newberry, ball went up. Actually hit the side of the rim there. Bounced back in the court of play, but it's called dead. Yeah, the guards aren't, aren't afraid to drive to the basket, so the Bulldog defense has to be ready all game. Jordan Booker has it from left to right. Now he's going to pass it over to Davon Russell. As well, Tarasi sets the pick on the play now. Passes it over to Jordan Booker. Picks back to the top of the key over to Russell. He now is going to drive. He was up there for a two. And it'll be Newberry basketball as well. Tarasi is called the foul. No, but that's their seventh. Karen Anderson coming in the game now for Sean Odom. Anderson's gonna try to give him some three-point depth, which they've been struggling all game. And because Newberry's already in the bonus, all the all the fouls, regardless if it's on the floor or not, it's gonna result in them shooting two three for Yeah. I got to be careful. Brandon Miller from Tampa, Florida at the line. His first shot is no good. Sorry, it was a one-on-one one one. opportunity. Yep. Avon Russell now is going to pass it over to Karen Anderson. Kicks it out for himself for a three. Missed off the marker. Great rebound by Mike Baker. It has the two. Baker getting that huge hop on him and getting that finish. Great play there. I was going to bring up the court now. Is Williams. And the ball goes out of bounds here. It'll be full. Dodge basketball with eight minutes and three seconds left to go here in the first half. 25 to 24. Talk, you're just joining us here in Paris. Talk about the biggest crook dental crowd here at the Asian Rob we've had in our four years at Dean College. Definitely so. Kicks it out to Karen Harris for three. This is something a great rebound as well for us. Drives inside as Dave on Russell will lose the basketball game. Now has it. And a foul will be called on the play. Hey, you go on your own. 
timeout. Yeah, another media timeout here. We'll have one more after this one here. But we're going to send it back to the studio for a quick PSA here on Power 88. Hi, everyone. Welcome here today. I'm speaking with Coach Trell. How are you, Coach? I'm good, Rob. How are you today? Good. So this opponent this week has got a very similar opponent. You guys play them usually every single year. How can some of the games in the past years kind of dictate what's going to go on this Saturday? So this is our second time playing them. They, they are a pretty unique team. They, um, first of all, they're, they're a deaf school, which is one of the, the few in the entire country. They're, they're a university down there, which makes them extremely unique. Um, so getting a chance to go to their field last year and experiencing what they go through was really good for us for, for a number of different reasons. But they're an option offense, so they're going to be an option offense, and they're running option again, and that always – uh, poses a challenge for us, so we got to make sure that we're prepared, to, you know, to, to do that. And it's different; it's it's a different style of offense than you'll play against anybody else through the calendar year. So, so that that's one way. And then obviously they do some good things on defense, and they're really solid in the kicking game. They got us last year on a couple plays in the kicking game. So, you know, making sure we're on point and and, and having a really good week, a disciplined week of, of football is what's important to us. So, as you mentioned, they do have an option on offense. Can you talk about how maybe you can kind of take things from maybe different teams around the country, maybe like an Army or Navy, kind of see what they do, and maybe feel like, hey, this is kind of what they run as well? Sure. So, in my past, we used to, when I was at UMass and Amherst, we used to battle Tim Stowers in, in Rhode Island, and that he's a disciple of what they're doing at Georgia Tech and in, in, uh, in that style of offense. So, I've been around the option offense in, in all of my years of coaching. So we've had to defend it. We've done it in many different ways. But really it comes down to you got to take a look at what your team can do, what, what we have for talent on defense, and then what kind of scheme we can put in place to be sound against them and maybe give them a look that they're not ready for. That's, those are the challenges, right? Because if you just line up and you're where they think you're going to be, you're in for a long day. So you got to make sure that you're very sound, you're very um, option responsible defensively, and uh, you get, you know, that, that your guys know their assignments and execute what they're doing. That's the biggest challenge. So. so last week the offense kind of struggled a little bit. How can this week your offense do a better job? Sure. So, you know, if we get our quarterback back and healthy, that's number one. Mm -hmm. And I got a lot of respect for my man, uh, for Quintus Reed stepping in. And he, ha he had to jump in up at Husson at halfway through the game when, when Terrell got hurt. And so Quintus jumped in and really gave us an opportunity to move the ball and, and be successful in the second half. That night, we did struggle quite a bit. We, di we didn't have our starting tailback in the lineup. Uh, we're down our, star our, you know, our starting wide receiver in Burris, who was the second leading wide out on our team. So those two losses with Terrell, you know, th those are hard obstacles to overcome. But that's the game of football. You're, you're, you're posed with challenges and you need to overcome those challenges. So obviously, it was disappointing we had some opportunities early in the game, but we just couldn't capitalize. So getting Terrell back in the game, you know, getting, you know, that's 200 yards of passing in the air that we're missing, which is what he's averaging right now. And he's the leader of our, our offense. There's no question when he's at the helm, there's a lot of faith. Not that anybody wavered from Quintus being in charge, but Terrell, there's a lot of faith with Terrell and what he can get done and his toughness and, and the opportunities he creates for us offensively with his arm opening up the run game because they know we have a, an opportunity to stretch them vertically in the pass game. What do you think are the keys for the Saturday's game? Um, we need to be disciplined on defense. If we will play a disciplined sound game, you know, against them defensively, we will have a chance to, to, to play. And, we, you know, the, the biggest thing and what we haven't done, we haven't done it all season, is we need to get off to a fast start. We have gotten beaten in the first quarter. In just about every game we've played, and especially in the last four weeks, so we need to get off to a good start. We've played everybody tough in the second half, and you know, but our our downfall has been the first quarter of the football game. So a fast start, disciplined on defense, and offensively getting our our guy back in there and doing what we do on offense. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Coach. Appreciate it, Rob. You have a great day. You too.